Hello, hello, and welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time here, hi, I'm Shu, and I make food, travel, and lifestyle videos here on YouTube. So I spent the past two days in the Isle of Wight as part of Rabi's three-day Isle of Wight and the South Coast tour. I had an amazing time, and if you want to see a video all about my time there and everything I experienced, then I'll link it up here. But today, I'm about to check out, get some breakfast, hop on the ferry over to Portsmouth and head over to Winchester for the third and final day of the tour, which I'm sad about because I've had such a good time. We're then gonna go to the Bombay Sapphire Gin Distillery, and I'm a big lover of gin, so I can't wait because I've heard really, really good things about it. I like Bombay Sapphire, um, and I hear that they're very generous with the gin. So I'm excited to go and taste some, for work purposes of course. But I thought I'd take you along with me because Rabies has also sent me a question to answer in this vlog and it is, what's so great about Winchester Cathedral? I've never actually been to the cathedral before so I'm gonna be on a mission today to answer that. Um, and I'll take you along with me and show you everything that I get up to, but first, breakfast. <music> Welcome to Winchester. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to drive here depending on traffic, but it is in the county of Hampshire. And I found out today that Winchester used to be the capital of the ancient kingdom of Wessex. So I am now heading over to the cathedral. I think it's in front of me somewhere. <laughs> I should really load up my map now. My first fun fact about the cathedral was that the cathedral nearly actually collapsed in the early 1900s and apparently it was sinking into the soil so they hired a very experienced diver called William Walker to try and fix it and he spent about six years in total in total darkness in waterlogged foundations trying to repair the cathedral. He did, he managed it and then now have a pub named after him in his honour. So now people have a drink because he single-handedly saved the cathedral from sinking into the soil. So yeah, it's cool that I saw this, but anyway, I think the cathedral is just in front of me here, behind the trees. I'm now by the cathedral. The cathedral is just behind me here and it is magnificent. So I've actually learned a few fun facts about the cathedral that I thought I would share with you. So I believe there used to be two cathedrals here in Winchester. The first one dates back to the 7th century and the present one, which is the one behind me, took 300 years to build and it dates back to the 11th century and it's built in the Norman Romanesque style. There's two very particularly famous people that have been buried here. The first one is King Alfred the Great and his statue is right by where we parked up in Rabbies and also Jane Austen the author is also buried here as well and I believe her house is somewhere nearby because she is a Hampshire girl so I might try and search for that later but for now I think I'm gonna go into the cathedral but first speak to John because he's got some things to say about the cathedral and the missions cost £9.50 and I read somewhere that it cost £7,000 upkeep uh, every single day to manage the cathedral so that's why they're there is a slightly steeper admissions fee, but I believe it's going to be worth it, so let's go inside. Also, I see John just right there. <laughs> John. Uh, I'm from Rabbi's Trailblazers. Uh, we're a travel company uh, that offer short holidays, uh, up to five days holidays uh, in and around Scotland, England and Wales. Now we come here today to Winchester. Now I've been asked to say what's great about Winchester. Well all I can say is just look. That's what's grows, grow great about Winchester. Apart from that it is the birthplace of the nation. This is where uh, the, the early kings of England, of Wessex, King Alfred, would come and worship. When I say come here, it's actually next door. There are two cathedrals in Winchester. This is the newer cathedral built in about the 11th century. Yay! Thank you. So it's not a well-known fact, but all English churches are built on an east to west axis. The altar is always in the east, while the main doors are always in the west. Um, two possible reasons for that. One 
is uh, that Jerusalem is in the east, so people always pray towards Jerusalem, a little bit that Muslims do with Mecca. Also the fact that uh, early churches were built on pagan sites, uh, sites of worship, and the pagans like to celebrate the, uh, the sunshine. just ended my tour of Winchester Cathedral which is very magnificent. Huge thank you to John for coming in with me and telling me all of the facts and the stories as well which was super super interesting and I also saw Jane Austen's grave as well. Oh we're under a dark wood. Wait let me try and readjust you in here. <laughs> here we go. Um, but I was asking him as well what the difference is between a church and a cathedral because I always get it mixed up and he told me that the difference is that a cathedral always has a bishop whereas a church doesn't but you can also call a cathedral a church but that's the way to differentiate them so I'm like oh now I know uh, but now I'm gonna yeah <laughs> what am I saying now I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat and then have a wander around Winchester and then we're gonna go to the Bombay Sapphire gin distillery which I am very excited about so a day of culture and then another type of culture so uh, let's go <laughs> Oh, another thing I learned as well is that the bell in Winchester always chimes at 8 o'clock and that's because that used to be the curfew bell back in the day to get people to go home. Now that's when the things are just getting started so yeah, that's why it still chimes now. myself a matcha latte and also a sandwich combination I've never had before. This is the toasted brie apple and pear sandwich. It looks like this. Actually it smells very very good so it tastes like a minced pie with cheese and toasted. It's actually very very good. About 30 minutes from Winchester, we are now at the Bombay Sapphire Distillery. Tickets are about £14.50 for an adult and you get a tour with it. So you get given this personal interactive guide because right at the back there is a special microchip that you're meant to tap at various stations. I think there's six in total throughout the distillery to find out more about the process, the history and also more facts about gin. But at the moment I haven't had to tap it. I've just pressed the button with all the different languages instead. They've got English, French, German, Spanish, Italian and Chinese. So just clicked on that and it's worked so far. Um, but now we've found number one and two and we're looking for the third station. But I think they're labelled differently. Hi John! <laughs> um, yeah, I think they're labelled differently because they're at various places. Number two was actually where number one used to be. So now we're trying to find number three. I think the people who were doing the signs were on drinking the gin before they signed it on to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently in 1720 there was a gin craze that hit London or in the UK and up to 70 litres per person per man, woman and child was made then. So it definitely was a craze but they weren't doing it very well. They're doing it pretty poorly and pretty cheaply. Um, anyway, next stop we are in the glass house and I think we're going to find some juniper berries which is a key component to gin making. Ron, are you excited? Yes, I am. <laughs> the jars smell, they contain all 22 of the aroma characters of Bombay Sapphire. Oh, so oh. lift the lid, get the hooter in, have a good smell, and if it's something you love, 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 and you pull out the drawer, you get the holy punch, and you snap off the number corresponding. One of four things happens. You're either very much drawn to one section, in which case that's your palate telling you which cocktail to go for, or your sporadic, I like that word so much I'm going to say it again, sporadic, mm -hmm. and you have something in the middle. So by the time you get to the bar, you'll be able to say, oh, I want that one, all right? Because your nose picks. Don't pick your nose. Just went inside to the distillery, but we weren't allowed to bring in any electronics because it's still actually working over there. But I found out that apparently this distillery used to be a paper mill because it had a 150 year contract with the Bank of England to print banknotes, but then it was very, very derelict. So then Bacardi then bought this and then turned it into the Bombay Sapphire Distillery. 
distillery that we see today. So it was really cool inside because we got to see the stills. And it was one called Thomas and one called Mary. Thomas was the founder and Mary married Thomas's great great grandson and she came up with the vapor infusion process which is how you make gin to this day and Thomas was the actual founder of Bombay Sapphire and his original recipe is still being made in the London dry gin that we see today which is super interesting we were learning about the distilling process as well and they distill it four times but they have to get rid of the head at the very start because the botanicals um, aren't warmed up yet so apparently the flavors aren't really really there so they get rid of that and put it in the in the last tank and then they also have the tails which is right at the very end when the botanicals are a bit more worn out and tired um, and then they have to then put it all into one tank that you can't reuse again for alcohol purposes in terms of drinking and then it gets transformed into things that require alcohol and things like hand sanitizers and stuff like that so the hand sanitizer we use today could actually have the unwanted bits of Bombay Sapphire in which is kind of mind-blowing and I thought that was really really cool but anyway after all of that it's now time to head into the gin bar which is the best part of the tour um, so with your ticket you actually get a complimentary cocktail and because I have this little form here I think mine is mostly citrus so it's coriander and lemon peel they're going to make me either a rosy rain a cocoa cola which is alcohol free which is the one I'm not opting for or a tonutty fruity which is a two pound extra charge for. So I'm gonna head over to the bar now. Le learn a lot today. I literally love gin, so it's really cool to learn all about it. And I just literally just tripped over my chair and tried to elegantly act like I said to do it. Um, but this is my third distillery. So I went to the Sipsmith one. I went to one in the city of London, which I forget the name for. And then Bombay Sapphire. And this one is probably the biggest one I've been to. And it's very well organized. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna try and find the bar now. I see the bar. The bar is here. Let's go in and get some gin. <laughs> Obviously I'm by myself now. Oh, I'm not going to have the gin yet and I can't even open the door. Oh, wow. That's very fancy. Okay. And then, please push it. <gasps> so we have the lava stoke, which is lime wedges, elderflower, liqueur, um, vermouth, gin and ginger ale. Yeah. So it's very refreshing. That's our signature cocktail. Oh, okay. We also have Secret English Garden. That is um, apple, lemon, apple juice, um, English estate, which is our limited edition Ooh. gin, and then top of ginger ale. If I had to choose, I'd probably recommend the signature one um, because that is the one that we make here. Okay. All the time. Could I get the signature one then? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Do you want to say bye? Bye. <laughs> 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 and just like that, I'm back in London now after a very successful Bombay Sapphire Gin Tour. Um, but I had such a good day and I thought I would end the outro with a kind of recap of everything today and to answer the question that Rabbi's first set for me for this video, which is what's so great about Winchester Cathedral? So cathedral-wise, it's so full of history. History was actually one of my favorite subjects growing up in school and I've always been gutted that I never pursued it further. So being able to learn about the Victorian life by Osborne House in the Isle of Wight, to the Middle Ages and King Alfred the Great and Jane Austen in Winchester Cathedral, which is so full of stories, was amazing. And then couple that with the Bombay Sapphire Gin Distillery Tour, which is always very, very welcome. I feel like Winchester is great overall as well because it's such a picturesque place, like wandering down the cobble streets, going to the coffee shops and just seeing all of the different buildings and the Tudor houses all around you was really, really lovely. And it's really nice to kind of escape London and experience the English countryside in Hampshire. Now I'm back in London and I just wanted to have the opportunity to thank Rabbies again for inviting me to your Isle of Wight and South Coast three day tour and for partnering me with this video. I absolutely loved working with you guys last year in the Lake District. So I was very, very chuffed to be able to work with you again this year. So thank you so much um, for such an amazing time and a special Special shout out to John who was our driver guide for uh, these three days and he really went above and beyond to make sure that we knew everything, we had a great time and we knew all the secret spots and everything there is to know beyond the guidebook. Um, but he was so 
lovely, so, so funny, and his dad jokes were also hilarious as well. We did all laugh along. I really, really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up to help spread it out to like-minded travellers. And if you are new to this video, I hope you enjoyed it. Consider subscribing for more travel, lifestyle, and food videos, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!